Hello and welcome to a discussion on the topic religion and ritual. First, let me begin with a very simple definition of religion. You see, religion can be defined as certain concepts or ideas and the practices associated with them. These practices hypothesize reality beyond that which is instantly available to the senses. It is a type of worldview that is to say a collective picture of reality created by members of a society that exists in many forms. As time passes and cultures change, religions evolve and change as well. Some popular present day religions include Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism and Judaism. Religions have different rituals and practices that accompany and highlight religious experience. However, these rituals are only a very small part of the vast diversity of practices that religions from around the world use. If we consider Christianity, then rituals play an integral part in Christianity. There are many denominations of the Christian church and they differ in the applications of some rituals. But some common ones are worshipping and praying as a community, baptism, confession and communion or the use of bread and wine to symbolize the blood and body of Christ and the power of his salvation. Christianity is not however the only major religion to focus on rituals. Participants of Islam if possible make the pilgrimage to Makkah in Saudi Arabia at least once in their lives and must pray five times every day at specific times in the direction of Makkah. Then in Judaism rituals include lighting the menorah, celebrating Hanukkah, abstaining from the consumption of pork and selfish and eating only unleavened bread during Passover. On the other hand, Hinduism involves regularly attending temples, burning incense and make offerings like sweets and flowers to each gods and goddesses altar. So you see every belief system whether it has 100 followers or 100 million followers uses rituals to symbolize important aspects of their faith. To begin with the definition, a ritual can be defined as a sequence of activities involving gestures, words and objects performed in a sequestered place and according to set sequence. Rituals may be prescribed by the traditions of a community including a religious community. They are characterized by formalism, traditionalism, invariance, rule governance, sectoral symbolism and performance. You see, rituals are a feature of all known human societies. They include not only the worship rites and sacraments of organized religions and cults, but also the rites of passage, atonement and purification rites, oaths of allegiance, dedication ceremonies, coronations and presidential inaugurations, marriages and funerals, school rush traditions and graduations, club meetings, sporting events, Halloween parties, veterans parades, Christmas shopping and more. Many activities that are ostensibly performed for concrete purposes such as jury trials, execution of criminals and scientific symposia are loaded with purely symbolic actions prescribed by regulations or tradition and in this sense are partly ritualistic in nature. Even everyday actions like shaking hands and saying hello may be termed rituals. See, there has been a number of conflicting definitions of the term ritual in the field of ritual studies. 
one given by Kiriakidis is that a ritual is an outsider's or attic category for a set activity that to the outsider seems irrational, non contiguous or illogical. It can also be used by the insider or emic performer as an acknowledgement that this activity can be seen as such by the uninitiated onlooker. Whereas in psychology, the term ritual is sometimes used in a technical sense for a repetitive behavior systematically used by a person to neutralize or prevent anxiety. So, here it is seen as a symptom of obsessive compulsive disorder. You see, there are hardly any limitations to the kinds of actions that may be incorporated into a ritual. The rites of past and present societies have typically involved special gestures and words, recitation of fixed texts, performance of special music, songs or dances, processions, manipulation of certain objects, use of special dresses consumption of special food, drink or drugs and much more to them. But still if we are to speak of the characteristics of ritual then it can be said that rituals are characterized by formalism, traditionalism, invariance, rule governance, sacral symbolism and performance as Catherine Bell has argued in religion. A ritual can comprise the prescribed outward forms of performing the cultus or cult of a particular observation within, within a religion or religious denomination. Although it is often used in context with the worship, the actual relationship between any religion's doctrine and its rituals can vary considerably from organized religion to non-institutionalized spirituality. Also, rituals are often regarded to have a close connection with reverence and thus in many cases they express reverence for a deity or idealized state of humanity. Anthropologists and linguists have long been interested in ritual and ceremony for what they reveal about the religious political, social and aesthetic aspects of societies and cultures. As a symbolic or performative action, rituals can be explored not only for their meanings but also for the effects they have on the lives of their participants. Despite all this, the definition of ritual is not quite clear, although it is definitely one of the themes in the area of religion and culture that affects most of us. Such acts, gestures, enactments generally construed are performative in the sense that the essence or identity that they otherwise purport to express are fabrications manufactured and sustained through pre-decided signs and words and a mutual understanding of the participants about the ritual's meaning. Recently, sociologists have broadened the notion of ritual to include the patterned interactions of everyday life, such as etiquette and ordinary daily performances. But in general, a ritual remains to be the performance of ceremonial acts prescribed by tradition or by sacerdotal decree. It is a specific observable mode of behavior exhibited by all known societies. It is thus possible to view ritual as a way of defining or describing humans. Because of the complexities inherent in any discussion of ritual, it is often useful to make distinctions by means of typology. Although 
Typologies do not explain anything. They of course help to identify rituals that resemble each other within and across cultures. First let me speak of imitative rituals. You see all rituals are dependent upon some belief system for their complete meaning and as you might know quite a huge number of rituals are patterned after myths. Such rituals can be categorized as imitative rituals in that the ritual repeats the myth or an aspect of the myth. Some of the best examples of this type of ritual include rituals of the new year which very often repeat the story of creation. In a passage from an Indian Brahmana which is a Hindu scripture, the answer to the question as to why a ritual is performed has been given by as because gods did it this way in the beginning. That is why we do it now. So see rituals of this imitative type can be seen as a repetition of the creative act of the gods a return to the beginning. Second, I come to sacrificial rituals. The importance of this type of ritual can be seen in the assessment of sacrificial ritual as the earliest or elementary form of religion. The significance of sacrifice in the history of religions is well documented. A sacrifice can be an animal or a vegetable like you know in the saptic way of worship no blood sacrifices may be offered. Durga Puja on the other hand used to have human sacrifice. But ever since the kings converted to the devotional Vaishnava movement in the 16th century there has been no such sacrifice in this ceremony. Later, blood sacrifices came back in a major way in the observance of Kali Pujas. But even today, there is no animal sacrifice to the goddess Durga anywhere in Vishnupur. Nor are non-vegetarian and hot foods such as meat, fish, eggs, onions, garlic and certain kinds of pulses offered to the goddess. Third, I will speak of life crisis rituals. See, any typology of rituals would remain incomplete without including a number of very important rites that can be found in practically all religious traditions and mark the passage from one domain, stage of life or vocation into another. The basic characteristics of the life crisis ritual is the transition from one mode of life to another. Rites of passage have often been described as rituals that mark a crisis in individual or communal life. These rituals often define the life of an individual and include rituals of birth, puberty, marriage, conception and death. Many of these rituals also mark a separation from an old situation or mode of life a transition, a right celebrating the new situation and a ritual of incorporation. So note that rituals are very natural to human beings and are seen to play a significant role in building personal and cultural identity. Ordinary family rituals are often given added meaning by overlaying them with forms of religious rituals and thereby placing the small and large events of life within a cosmic framework. Religious rituals are generally considered as indispensable in deepening spiritual insight. The repetition of rituals instills religious values and attitudes in the lives of the worshippers. Side by side, rituals also express and emphasize the things that bind a faith community together and through them both individuals and communities make visible their most basic religious needs, values and aspirations. In all religions, the major events marking the cycle of life are given prominence and marked through rituals like birth, growth to adulthood, marriage and death. 
In fact, seasons of the year are also marked through harvest thanksgiving. The blessings of the fruit or rituals related to winter and summer solstice other events not connected to the natural cycle, but observed through annual rituals connected with religious beliefs include the Christian observation of the life of Christ, the Islamic observance of Ramadan and Tarawi and the Jews Ros Hasana and Jom Kippur to name a few. The 20th century liturgical movement within the Christian churches show a renewal of ritual through revised patterns of worship. The Roman Catholics Second Vatican Council promoted important changes including use of languages other than Latin for services and the designing of new churches giving a greater focus on communal worship. Similarly, other churches and religions have attempted to respond to changes in language and thought. Music has also been quite central to ritual and worship since primitive times. Music reflects moods, can sustain and evoke emotion and ecstasy and is primarily a corporate action. Jewish music is clearly known to have descended from the biblical references to the rituals of the temple and King David. Also Christianity right from its inception has used music in worship and in early times the majority of the service of worship was sung or chanted. In Islam too, music is intrinsic to the ritual chanting of the Quran and to the call to prayer. But let me mention here that not all religious rituals occur in churches or in organized religious ceremonies and this point is but a reflection of typical Australian views about the privacy of religious beliefs. Speaking of some instances of rituals, I will first come to ancestor worship. You see, ancestor worship is basically defined as a religious or spiritual practice which revolves around the belief and that the deceased continue to have a presence after demise and contribute to the spiritual quality of their living relatives. Most religions have some form of ancestor worship and consider the connection they have to their ancestors to be an important component of their belief systems. This type of worship can often be confused with the worshipping of gods and deities. But you must note that it is an entirely separate practice. There are many cultures which see ancestor worship as non-religious, something that simply strengthens bonds with family and offers desired proper respect for deceased loved ones. Others base a person's social status on who their ancestors were and how high on the social hierarchy they were in life. But the truth remains that ancestor worship is mainly performed so that by placating one's ancestors they may be taken care of in life and death. In return, it also ensures that the ancestors' spirits may be at peace, sacrifice, elaborate burial ceremonies and the preparation of specific food dishes sometimes accompany this type of worship as well. Next I will speak of pilgrimage. Well, you must be knowing that pilgrimage is a journey on behalf of ritual and religious belief. One who goes on a Pilgrimage is called a pilgrim. Often pilgrims try to obtain salvation of their soul through this physical journey. Most of the times this journey is to a shrine or a sacred place of importance to a person's respective faith. 
So, see, because the act of pilgrimage is relevant to so many different cultural contexts, there is no single definition to describe this act. But then, some similarities are noticeable. Pilgrimage usually requires separation from the common everyday world and in displaying that separation, a pilgrim may mark their new identity by wearing special clothes or abstaining from familiar comforts. Frequently, pilgrimages link sacred place with sacred time like during the Hajj which always occurs on the 8th, 9th and 10th days of the last month of the Muslim year. In this context, let me also brief about Hajj. Well, see Hajj is relevant to the followers of Islam. It is the fifth pillar of faith. It occurs on the 8th to 12th day of Dhul Hijjah, which is the 12th month of the Islamic lunar calendar. Members of the Islamic faith are encouraged to perform the Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. Once a person has successfully completed the pilgrimage to Mecca, he or she will receive the status of a Haji. So, these were a few important instances of ritual practices among different religious faiths. Let me end this discussion with a few noteworthy points. See, ritual behavior is obviously a means of non-verbal communication and meaning, but this aspect of ritual is often overlooked in the stress on the relation of rituals to myth. Thus, the meaning of ritual is often looked for in the verbal, spoken or belief system. The spoken elements in a ritual setting often do reveal the meaning of a ritual by reference to a belief system or mythology. But this does not happen always. Such a connection has led to an overemphasis on the importance of the belief system or myth over ritual. To assert that myths disclose more than ritual ever can is an oversimplification of the complex correlation of these two important aspects of religion. A partial explanation of this emphasis is undoubtedly the fact that a vast amount of data both primary and secondary is literary in form. Theories about ritual are either deduced from the primary literature of a religious tradition or are translated into written language as a result of observation. But does this mean that rituals are only to be studied as verbal forms? No, rituals can be of course be studied as non-verbal communication disclosing its own structure and semantics. Scholars have only recently turned to a systematic analysis of this aspect of human behavior and the progress in kinesics that is the study of non-verbal communication may provide new approaches to the analysis of rituals. This development may well parallel the progress in linguistic and the analysis of myth as an aspect of language. Side by side, a complete analysis of ritual would also include its relation to art, architecture and other specific objects used such as some special forms of ritual, dress, all of these components are found in ritual context and as you can well understand, all of them are non-verbal in structure and meaning. Another important point which is mentioned worthy is that most rituals mark of a particular time of the day, month, year, stage in life or commencement of a new event or vocation. This temporal characteristic of ritual is often called sacred time. What must not be forgotten in the study of ritual is a special aspect 
that is often described as sacred space. So, see time and place are two essential features of ritual action and both mark a specific orientation or setting for ritual. The shape, spatial orientation and location of the ritual setting are essential features of the semantics of ritual action. Added to this when particular ritual objects, dances, gestures, music and dress are included in the study of ritual, the total structure and meaning of ritual behavior far exceed any one description or explanation of ritual man. Although in recent years there has been little consensus among scholars on an adequate theory or framework for explaining or describing ritual. Though the term has often been used to describe the determined or fixed behavior of both animals and men, the future study of ritual may disclose that this behavior found throughout history and cultures is as unique to man as his capacity for speaking a language and that change in ritual behavior is parallel to or correlated with change in language. With this we come to an end of the discussion of the module entitled religion and ritual. We will meet again in some other discussion on some other topic. Thank you.